you for joining me today and welcome to my sewing room. Oh, do we have something exciting for you today. You know, exciting is good, but exciting and easy is better. And let me tell you, that's exactly what I have. This show today covers a topic that is a very, very popular one in heirloom sewing, shaped puffing. Puffing that is shaped into a circle is on this lovely, really pretty ladies gown, which was a pattern that we had in Sew Beautiful magazine a number of years ago. Christening dresses, baptismal dresses, blessing dresses, and baby dedication dresses are really, really important factors in using lovely heirloom techniques. The shaped puffing on this christening dress is tiny little shaped puffing, maybe about an inch wide. This lovely round yoke is not the main feature of this gorgeous christening dress, though. Let me go on down to the skirt. This is a go-day christening dress. Go-day meaning a strip that is inserted. Look at the shaped puffing, actually two rows of shaped puffing along the bottom of this perfectly elegant go-day shaped christening dress. Here is what I mean when I say a go-day. This is the little go-day, which is built into the christening dress and the shape puffing is in the actual gourd part of the dress. Oh, look at this blouse. I went to a meeting, or rather I did a fashion show, and the, probably the best dressed lady in Huntsville came up to me after the fashion show, and she said, Martha, that is the single most beautiful blouse I've ever seen. Who can make one for me? And needless to say, I could tell her. The shaped puffing in this blouse is tiny little shaped puffing too, about an inch wide. Let me turn it around to the back. Then it's called candle flame. Do you see the candle flame shape in the puffing that goes all around in the lovely portrait collar of this elegant blouse? Now, I can't leave out the little boys. You know, we have two grandsons and four granddaughters, so we have to do these elegant things for the grandsons, too. This is a really simple little shaped puffing on this little boy suit. Day gowns are absolutely wonderful for new babies, and you know day gown styles never change. Look at the shape, not puffing, but just shaped lace. Then the shaped puffing is down here on the skirt of this elegant little day gown. This particular day gown was made for one of my grandchildren to wear home from the hospital. As you can see, I had to go back and pick up these day gowns for the show. But the little narrow, narrow shaped puffing is perfectly elegant. Come with me to the technique boards to discover how easy it is for you to make shaped puffing. Curved puffing begins with a piece of puffing. In this case, it was done using the gathering foot on the sewing machine. Then I trace off the lines, in this case a line for insertion, one for the puffing, one for insertion, and this will be traced off onto the blouse or onto the day gown. Now I take this piece of puffing over here, in other words I'm going to begin to shape. As in lace shaping, I put the pins on the, on the big side of the curve, lifting up and seeing that I put the pins right on the line I drew, and then you might say, well how do you get this floppy part of the puffing to lay down? Well, this is the principle of mush it down. You just simply take your fingers, mush it down, and believe it or not, you can even take your hand and just kind of put it on top like that. But you take your fingers and you mush it down and then you pin a little bit on the top. This is what the lace shaping looks like. After I get the puffing down, I then pull the lace shaping around and you know to, to make the lace lay flat, I will have to pull a string, so after the lace is all shaped, I will come in here and once again pull a string and make it lay flat, and then if you will look right here, you will see how the, um, how the puffing looks after I have everything lace shaped and zigzagged now. Come on over to the sewing machine, let me share with you how, to, how this is done on our quilt square for the day. All kinds of exciting shapes can be found on puffing. This little quilt square for the series has puffing that comes, oh, I would almost call this boomerang puffing. Do you see it's shaped a little bit like a boomerang? Very easy to make. Now, the candle flame puffing that we showed you a few minutes ago, 
is shaped like this. Do you see the candle flame and the pretty laces? I'm going to flip this over since this piece is finished and show you what happens after I zigzagged all of the laces down. After I zigzag the laces down, then I come in and cut away this piece of fabric that was behind there to make the lace peekaboo. Then I cut away the fabric that was behind the puffing. And then I cut away the fabric that was behind the other lace. That's how you make the curved uh, puffing and the lace be a peekaboo. Now, curved puffing into a circle. Let me show you how to pin that. I, pu I put the pin through the area that uh, the sewing machine made through the, the, puff, the gathering foot on the sewing machine. And then I pull it out, just kind of, you don't really guess, you can actually pick it up and look underneath there if you want to, to be sure you're getting the pins in on the lines that I have drawn. Now this is, I'm making a circle here and I'm gonna sew this circle for you in just a minute. I pull it out and you see this little floppy part right here? That's the principle of mush it or smush it down. I just simply take my hand and believe it or not, and I think this is pretty magical, believe it or not, when I smush it down, there it is. It goes where it's supposed to go. So I will take another couple of pins and pin that. Now do you see the principle of the shaped puffing? I shape the puffing first and then I add my laces onto this board and do all of the hoopla on this board. Then I remove the pins and then I go to the sewing machine to sew. I have this particular lace circle, circle already to stitch. Now I have the lace circle of puffing the lace circles of lace, which I've pinned the lace, and you can see I pull the string to make the lace lay down flat into a nice flat circle. And I have lace on the outside, puffing lace on the inside, on my Batiste uh, quilt square. And then I have a tearaway stabilizer underneath this. Anytime I'm working with uh, puffing, I do that. You know what? I almost forgot to show you one more time how you make the puffing with the gathering foot. Let me do this real quickly just so you won't have any doubt in your mind. Assuming that you have a machine that has a puffing foot, it's so easy to do. Actually, you know what? It isn't a puffing foot. It's a gathering foot, but since I love to make puffing, I usually call this gathering foot a puffing foot. Okay, when I begin to sew, I do not sew, if you'll just look real carefully with me, I do not sew putting the gathering foot on the very edge of the fabric. I move in, oh, at least a half an inch or an inch. That way the puffing will be pretty every time. That's a real trick. Okay, now then my length is on about three because I'm puffing uh, on Swiss Batiste. And then I sew, gathering, just sew, 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 sew. And you see the seam allowance is over on the edge. It is not on the edge of the foot. The seam allowance I'm guiding on one of these little lines over here that's uh, printed on my sewing machine. And then it just gathers and that puffing is absolutely beautiful. Right there it is. I've made automatic instant puffing with perfect gathers every time. And that, my friends, is the way I like to make puffing. You see, and then I go down the other side of this little strip, and that is the way I make my gathering foot puffing, which is so much easier. Okay, with a little quick change of the foot right here, let me just put my regular zigzag foot on. And I'm going to put my circle of puffing right here. You remember we've made boomerang puffing, we've made circular puffing, we've made candle flame puffing. You can puff in any shape you want to. Remember, the choice is yours. Okay, now I'm going to do just a zigzag. So I'm going to go over to about, oh, I guess about two and a half and take it down to about a one stitch length. And I'm going to uh, guide the center of the foot. And I'm simply going to start on the outside. And, oh, that's a little bit wide. Hang on, let me go a little bit more narrow. Okay, here we go. About Well, about two and a half, right at two and a half. I think I... Uh, didn't look carefully enough. Now then remember, no sewing machine in the world suggests that you sew over pins. So as I travel along using glass head pins, because you know plastic pins will melt when you iron them, I am simply zigzagging this puffing down, pulling the pins out, and I was going to look for my little stick over there to kind of hold the lace underneath, but I'll get it out in a few minutes. You see, I'm just zigzagging along, pull the pin out, here we go, just zigzagging around. First of all, the outside, and then I will zigzag. The next uh, line I will zigzag will be where the lace joins the puffing, right here. And then I will move over where the lace joins the puffing here. And then I will move over here where the lace joins the puffing. And that is all you do. Now remember, after I get all the zigzagging done, 
Let me get the little area. How do I make it peekaboo? Let me show you once again on this. You see this lace is peekaboo, just like on this circle, all of these laces, it will be peekaboo in behind these laces. Anyway, you just go back in and trim it away. Now, come on over with me. I have a wonderful little dress, a lovely drop-waisted dress, which is the dress we're featuring on this series for you, with a lovely collar, which has these sweet little scallops. See, here's another type of puffing. This one makes a little scallop, scallop puffing around the edge, and look on the bottom. Here we have oval puffing on the bottom of this little skirt, how pretty it is, and then it makes a scallop skirt on the bottom. Now, for my little lesson on the board today, I thought it would be nice to show you how to make the scalloped puffing because that's the one we haven't done yet. So what am I going to do? First of all, I trace off the scalloped lines on this basic round collar pattern. Then I shape my puffing, just pulling it up and around and up and around, up and around, making the scallops. And then I come in, put pins on the outside of the lace, pull the string to make the lace lay down. Actually, there are little miters here. The little miters where you fold it back and remove the pin, and then I shape it, and needless to say, I will have to take all of these pins out and get it off the board before I go to sew it. Isn't this easy and fun? I have a sweet little doll who is wearing a curved puffing dress also. I think my little blue-eyed blonde doll looks absolutely precious in this robin's egg blue Swiss batiste dress with curved puffing. The first little area of this little drop-waisted dress that has curved puffing comes around the bodice, comes up into a little mitered point, and then goes around into another curve on the back. Wait until you see this precious little skirt. Let me hold my hands out here so you can see it. It has a little half circle which comes around and makes little scallops that go all the way around the back. In other words, the back of the skirt goes into these sweet little scallops from this little half circle which has lace that travels around, almost looks like an ocean wave. I really think this is a pretty skirt and actually it's very easy to make also. Step number one, you remember we did the puffing with the gathering foot, so here is my puffing strip which I'm going to use for the bodice and the skirt. All right, step number two. Here is the bodice traced out. You can see the little shoulders and the armholes. The drop-waisted bodice is traced out. Now, I have shaped the puffing right in here, and then I've shaped the puffing first, and then I have come in and mitered the corners, put the laces down before I sew it. Now, I'm gonna lift this up just a little bit. Before I zigzag this bottom piece of the lace down, though, I'm gonna have to come in here with my scissors. I'll have to come in here and trim away the excess puffing because otherwise it will stick out, and I'll have to do that before I sew it. All right, here we go with the skirt. This is that wonderful little ocean wave I was telling you about. The puffing on the skirt begins over here, comes up, pinches in a little bit of a miter there, and then the lace shaping begins. Okay, here is this skirt after I have shaped the curved lace around and around we go, all the way around, zigzagging the inside and the inside. Now look, this clearly, more clearly illustrates. Let me try to get my arm out of the way here. What happens? I zigzag the inside of this lace shaping, and then because my little puffing strip is a little bit too wide, I have to go in and trim away my little puffing strip. So I'll just hold this little piece back here and trim away my little puffing strip, and then I will be ready to go back in and zigzag. After zigzagging all four sides, the top and the middle and the middle, well, excuse me, three sides, I'm sorry, then I will come in and cut away the bottom of this skirt then I will be ready to pull my gathered lace edging in, come up in the little miter point, pull in the gathered lace edging just a little bit at a time. You know you pull the string to make the lace gather, and then I will pull it down and zigzag, simply zigzagging my gathered lace edging all the way around the bottom of this skirt, and that is how easy it is to make this little ocean wave puff doll dress. Pretty embellishments are truly elegant on doll clothes as well as ladies' and children's clothes. Let's go see our next silk ribbon embroidery stitch that we have for you today. Music 
I am pleased to welcome today Kathy Brower as my guest. Kathy is the embroidery editor of So Beautiful magazine and has for you today one of the most beautiful silk embroidery stitches that I have ever seen. Kathy, welcome to the show. Thank you, Martha. Once again, it's a pleasure to be here. Um, today I have a really simple stitch to do, but it looks elaborate and it dresses up the most beautiful floral sprays. It's just a loop stitch, which is a straight stitch that has more, uh, I would say, more less tension in it. You just keep it loose. Um, it's as called you, a loop a stitch. A loop stitch, oh, okay. yes. Um, it's great to use with the wider ribbons, but it may, it's beautiful out of any size ribbon you choose to use. On the blanket, uh, this beautiful blanket that we've had on the show before has a beautiful example of a loop stitch that has been decorated on top. I suggest somehow decorating the top of the loop stitch to secure it, to keep it from moving in and out or, or loosening up. It keeps it stable. Um, this is a 32 millimeter thread, uh, ribbon used here with the little ribbon on top in a darker shade and it's just five loop stitches made in a flower and then this is sewn on top. You can also use beads or pearls or what, whatever you would like. Um, I've also found that it makes beautiful bows and um, I've, as an example, I've sewn a beautiful bow here which is a loop stitch on both sides then wrapped with a straight stitch and then you just pull your extra little uh, ribbon through. As you see, I can pull it in and out. Uh, you can anchor that down if you want to um, from the back. This is a uh, 13 millimeter ribbon used um, the same way as on my quilt and then tacked down with just floss. It would be cute to put little beads on e the ends of these. And this is the little four millimeter thread and it's just used as a little daisy with a knot in the middle. I'm going to be using this wide 32 millimeter thread uh, ribbon. I keep wanting to call this thread, <laughs> but it's ribbon. And this huge, look at this large needle. This needle has a huge eye in it, but it's also very thick and there's a good reason for it. When you're using wide ribbon, you want to use kind of a thick needle because it punctures a, a hole in the fabric, which will help guide your, your ribbon through much easier. As you see, I'm not struggling too much. What you want to do is come up in the middle start in the middle somewhere and you'll take your needle and you'll put it just right next to the stitch you just took in the you can do it in the back or the front of the stitch whichever because it'll loop just really nicely here you want to try to keep your ribbon from twisting because you want a nice straight even loop and I'm going to hold that with my finger or with a guide tool like this and pull it down until I've gotten the size loop that I want. It's as simple as that. That is a loop stitch. And for a flower, you simply come up next to it, underneath here, pull it again. As you, as you can see, they kind of flop around. So when you're finished with your whole flower, you, might, you really do need to anchor it somehow. You can also go into the front of the loop instead of the back of the loop if you need to make it more even. That's how simple it is. Well, Kathy, thank you so very much. You're welcome. And now I have a home decorating idea for you using curved puffing. This heart puffing pillow is a real beauty, I think. This particular little pillow has shadow work embroidery in the center and then there is a puffed heart which travels all the way around and it has it's white pillow with ecru laces and there are even some little beads right in the middle of the shadow work embroidery. Making this puffed heart is very easy to do. This little principle I would like to share with you. When I pin laces, I pin the large side of the curve. In other words, I pin the big side of this heart. Then it leaves lace that is floppy. I have to pull this lace down flat. Can you see how that lace is floppy? When I pin the big side, I can run my hand right up underneath this lace. Okay, there are two places I can pull this lace. The first one is right over here in the middle. There are five gathering threads in English and French laces. I have put the pin underneath one of them and as I pull it, as I pull it, the lace lays down flat so I can pull it there. Then, right here in this little corner, 
I can also pull the laces in the corner. I can pull it either in this section of the lace or I can pull this thread right here in the corner. So let me pull it and I want you to see how magical it is. The laces just lay down in that pretty heart and then I can come in here and put just a few more pins and then I'm ready to press this heart after I've made the lace lay down flat. Really pretty there, stick a few more pins in. I'm ready to press this heart by just putting the iron down on top of it, on top of it, on top of it. And then of course I remove the pins, get it off the board, pin it flat, and then I'm ready to take it to the sewing machine and stitch it flat. Now that's how easy it is to make one of these uh, puffed heart pillows. We have another sweet Victorian craft idea for you that's very easy to make. It's a little Victorian fan brooch. The Victorian fan pin, which I have for you, actually I'm going to put it on as soon as I finish showing you how to make one. It is just a glue gun project or a bottle of glue. This is a little Victorian fan pin. It has little uh, porcelain buttons glued on it, little tiny flowers, and it's finished with a little ribbon. And then, of course, when I flip it over, you can see that there's just a little pin from the uh, craft store. I start with a little fan which has already been stiffened. Actually, this is ready to go. Now, if you were to buy a little soft fan, just get some fabric stiffener to stiffen it. Okay, I put it down. Then this is one little porcelain button. I'll put right here another little porcelain button. I can just play with these any way I want to play with them and arrange them. These little heart buttons I might even put on top of the other two. You see, you can arrange it any way you want to. And then my little final embellishments are these tiny little flowers, just a little flower torn apart, little silk flower, placed around and then glued. And then I put the little pin on the back and there is my, and I glue it all down. And that is how easy it is to make this little fan brooch or fan pin. Now, I love to collect antique clothes. I would like to invite you to go to my attic and let me share some wonderful, wonderful treasures out of my grandmother's trunk. I have some of the most beautiful little garments for you today. The first one is a little puffing dress, a very small little puffing dress, I might add. It has little puffing strips down the center front and over on each side. The sleeves have a little puffing treatment before the really wide lace. I think that's an interesting little sleeve. The skirt has more puffing on it. There's a little row of puffing right as the little drop-waisted dress joins the fancy band or the little skirt. Another row of the wide lace. And then, very interesting, because I've never seen a dress like this except on this one antique, there is a row of puffing that is the absolute bottom of the dress and finishes the dress. I think this is a very unique... Oh, I forgot to show you the back. The back has is almost all puffing too. Isn't that sweet with the little buttons, two rows of puffing, and that's the way the buttons close. This next little dress is a little bit later dress than the one before. This dress probably was of the 1935, maybe 1940. This little dress was made in France, and it was made for, I believe it says made for Best & Company. Um, this dress has a little puffing that runs around the waistline and guess what this little puffing is used as a ribbon casing another very interesting feature which I have never seen before on little dress is puffing on the sleeves once again used as a ribbon casing to pull the little sleeve up and make it fit and there is not any puffing on the back of that dress except where the ribbon casing runs in this little dress is truly one of the baby dresses of the turn of the century. This is almost not puffing, but really it is in a way. This is wide puffing. It goes from the top of the scooped neckline down to the waistline. It is gathered and has three little rows. Well, in this case, it's four little rows. It's three little rows up here of almost a cording stitched down. Thank you for joining me today, and I certainly hope you will be able to visit with me next week in my sewing room.